Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. This is Project 17 for our Multi-Project Electronics Learning Board. This is called Frequency Division. Now, the neat thing about, about counters and flip-flops, uh, we talk about that, the 74LS93 Decade Counter, in one of the tutorials listed below. If you haven't watched it, watch it. The neat thing about it is, is we can use that not only to count in binary, but we can also use them as a frequency divider. See, um, the A output has a binary representation of 1, B2, C4, and D8. And that said, when we feed a clock from our, our pulse, uh, a frequency from our oscillator, our 555 timer in A-stable mode, what will happen is the, uh, the A output will be half of that frequency, B will be 1 fourth, C will be 1 eighth, and D will be 1 sixteenth. And we'll get to that in a second. So our A-stable 555 timer-based multi-vibrator circuit will create square wave pulses. And we can change the frequency by adjusting our RA and RB variable resistors on the board. And we will do that because we want a relatively fast frequency right here. So we're going to connect our AST pin on the board to our clock pin on the board. And if you remember, what we have to do for our N1 and N2 pins is we're not going to connect this to our 7 segment display. We're going to ground one of these pins. doesn't matter which one. You can ground them both if you like, but it makes no difference. That will activate our counter. So basically, here's what we've got. Look at this table. This is our input clock. This is our out A, out B, out C, out D. Now on the board, they're actually labeled out A tog, uh, out B, out C, and out D. So uh, if we connect any of these outputs to an LED, it'll actually show us the frequency division, and we'll see that in a second. So the input of the 74LS93 counter is an NGT input, which means it uh, it, tog it, act it toggles on the negative uh, negative edge. So as you can see, I've got little arrows on the uh, on the falling edges of all of my waveforms here, only on the falling edges. So here's my first uh, clock pulse. On the negative falling edge, the A output toggle states. In this case, it toggles high. On the next falling edge, it toggles low, so it's toggling states. On the next falling edge. Uh, the clock, out it toggles high again, and the next falling edge it toggles low again. So it's changing states every single time there's a falling edge on the clock. That's our out A. So our out B looks at out A as, as its clock. So think of this as the the B cl the, the clock going into B. Every single time there is a negative falling edge on the A line on the A output, the B uh, output will toggle states. In this case, toggles high. On the next falling edge, it will toggle low. On the next falling edge, it'll toggle high and low, and so on and so on. Same with out C. That's the uh, the out C is actually looking at B as its clock. So on the first falling edge of B, clock C will or output C will go will toggle high. On the next falling edge, it will toggle low, and so on and so on. And D will toggle high on the first falling edge of clock C or of out C and it will toggle low on the second falling edge, and so on and so on. Now the neat thing here is this, this we can also, also look at this as, as a binary count. Right here is zero. Um, here is one. Here is two. And I say that because this has a binary weight of one, two, four, and eight. So here we have one. Uh, here we have two, only B is high. So B is worth 2. So here, B and A are, are both high, so that's 2 plus 1 is 3. Here, only C is high for this for this portion of time. And that's worth 4, so that's a binary representation of 4. Uh, here, C is high and A is high, so 4 plus 1 is 5, and so on and so on. I don't want to get back into binary counting. We actually talk about that more during the 74LS 993 Decade Counter um, tutorial. But anyway, I hope you see that. So each one looks at the previous output as its input clock. So really, for the 16 pulses here, D is only as high for 8 of them. So that's, that's uh, so it's essentially, it's, it's 1 16th. This is one pulse. So it's 1 16th of our clock right here. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to take our 555 timer output, we're going to connect to our clock input, and we're going to take turns connecting this, the out A to our LED, out B to our LED, out C to our LED, and out D to our LED. And we'll actually see frequency division on the board. The first thing we want to do is ground one of our AND pins on our counter, AND1 or AND2. So I'll just take AND2, and I'll connect it to 
one of the ground terminals on the board labeled common on the power supply block. So our counter is now activated. Now what I want to do is I want to set my 555 timer output so it's got a relatively, well not a high frequency, but a higher frequency. So I'm going to take my AST output, my A stable output. My 555 timer and A stable mode is right here. This is RA, this is RB. I'm going to connect that to my LED. So it's pulsing so fast that we can't even see it right now. We just see it as on because our eyes can't pick up on how fast it's pulsing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect that to our clock input. Our clock, our counter input clock is now, is now incrementing. Our output of the of the uh, 74LS93 is now counting. So I'm going to take our out A, our out A tog line. I'm going to connect it to the LED. So that's half of the input frequency. Now I'm going to connect out B. One fourth of the input frequency. As you can see, it's getting slower and slower. I'm going to take out C. And that's one eighth of the input clock frequency. And finally, out D. One sixteenth of the clock frequency. So this is actually something you would learn in, I mean, all of these projects are stuff that you would learn in university or college for electronics. But this is a very, this is a very neat thing because uh, what you can do, that what you can use here is you can make an ultrasonic bat detector if you want. Uh, ultrasonic bats give off ultrasonic signals. You can pick up those ultrasonic signals which are out of the, um, which are out of the audio range. Um, but you can receive them with ultrasonic transducers. You can amplify the signal, and then you can f divide it down so it's in the f in, in the uh, in the audio frequency. So you divide it down three or four times, and you're well within the audio frequency. Feed that signal to a speaker, and there you go. You can actually hear the bat. So that's just one application for frequency division. I hope you found this educational. We're almost done. We just got three more videos, guys. Thank you for purchasing the Electronics Learning Board. I hope uh, I hope you're finding this to be as much fun as I am to make the videos. Thanks.